Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Untangle webinar on the all new reports in NG Firewall version 11.2. Uh, uh, my name is Shannon Miles, and I'm part of the product marketing team here at Untangle, <clears throat> and I will be your host today. Uh, our CTO and co-founder, Dirk Morris, is also here, and he will be uh, going through this, this webinar and discussing and demonstrating how uh, these new features in the all-new reports, um, uh, how, how, to work, how they work, and, and um, answer any questions that you guys may have. Next slide. And uh, just a few housekeeping rules before we get started. Um, if you have uh, if you have any issues, um, audio issues, please just use the audio panel and select your your preferred preference. Um, if you've selected a phone, you will need to dial in and use the access code provided. Just a reminder: this webinar is being recorded, so you will have the option to rewatch and revisit areas that you need to follow up on. And uh, as always, we'll be answering questions throughout the presentation, so please just submit your um, questions through the chat box. Um, we'll answer them throughout, and also Dirk will answer them at the end of the presentation. And as always, if you have any other questions that we don't get to, you can email us at salesanuntangle.com or support at untangle.com. All right, so now I will pass it to Dirk. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Hopefully we'll get through a lot of the new reports, some of the new functionality, how it all works and fits together, and have time for questions as well. So um, Shannon or anybody, please shout out to me if you see any good questions come in and feel free to interrupt me. Um, you guys just type questions in your question and answer box and go to a meeting and hopefully we'll get to them all. Um, so I'm just gonna do a deep dive into the new reports um, as you're probably aware, the reports have been completely redesigned in 11.2. Um, with the old reports are still there, so the new reports are alongside next to them. Um, the old reports will eventually be going away probably in 12.0, um, but for now you actually have both reporting systems running on your Entangle at the same time. So to start, and you can see my screen, correct Shannon? Yeah, you're good. Yes. I can see your screen. Perfect. Um, so there's a couple ways to access reports. You can view reports just like you always could, which takes you to the URIP slash reports. You can also just go to this URL directly. Just type in the IP of your Untangle server slash reports. Um, in there is a link to the old reports. You can also get to the old reports here. Um, a little differently than the old reports is you can now access the reports from within the administration UI. So this is the one I use the most. If you just go to the drop down, you can see, you know, sessions and hosts, and there's a new entry called show reports. And that will open up reports within the administration UI. And additionally, reports are now built into the apps. So um, this isn't the whole reports, but if you go to the reports tab on the web filter, you'll see the web filter reports. And here's all the different report entries for web filter. So there's a whole lot of different ways to access reports. Um, they're kind of littered all throughout the UI now, um, and we hope that'll be a lot easier so that they're more accessible when you're commonly using the administration UI. Oh, and before I dig in too much, let me just go over one thing. If you're a current Untangle user, we roll out upgrades gradually to the whole population. So just because you've got Untangle 11.1 installed doesn't mean necessarily all of them will have access to 11.2. If you want it now, just contact us at the support and we'll put you on an early upgrade list. Otherwise, if you just wait a couple of weeks, you'll probably uh, have it pretty soon. Uh, I think we're probably over halfway through the rollout. So 50% of servers will have access to 11.2 and more every day. All right, so let me jump back into reports real quick. Um, this is just my local server in my local house. Um, so there's not a ton of data. This isn't a huge network. Uh, but let me just click through some reports and show kind of the basics. So I clicked on the web filter over here. Everything's aver aver uh, everything is organized by categories or applications. So if I click on web filter, I'm going to see all the web filter report entries and event entries. Um, so previously, these were known as event logs. They're now just kind of live in reports. And then a bunch of different reports that show all sorts of different things. Uh, this screen basically is kind of your cockpit and your view into reports. Um, the main report viewing panel is in the middle. 
but there's all sorts of stuff around the outside. So real quick, the stuff along the top usually changes or customizes the view that you see here. So if I click on these buttons, and these buttons show different things at different times. Um, they're more or less just different views into the same data that you're seeing here, along with a couple you know, ways to download the PNG file for this graph and actually view the events that, that make up this graph. Along the left is the list of all the things that are available in this category. So if I click on spam blocker, it changes to you know different things. Or if I click on, oh, let me see, um, network, you see a whole bunch of different networking relating reports. So it depends on what you're looking at that the things change. So this is, if I click on system, I see a bunch of reports related to the system status, the actual server status. Um, and as I said, this is broken up into two categories, reports, which are kind of basically charts and actually events. So if I click on one of those all web events, this is in real time, you know, showing what's going on on this network. This is what we used to call event logs. And I'll go into a little bit about why these are now here and organized this way. On the right side is showing you the data that is used to make up this chart. So when I click on web usage all, web usage all shows you by default the last 24 hours of web usage. So here you can see by each hour how many web hits there were, how many violations. There weren't a lot of violations. I can click on this to show you, zoom in, basically get rid of the, the green bar. Um, and you can see this is last night, and then when people are sleeping, there's very little web traffic going on. It's probably just updates and things like that running in the background, and this morning when people wake up. Um, so again, this is not a huge network, but this will give a good example. Um, this is just the data used to make that graph, make that graph, and you can export this at any time to a CSV file, um, so you can play around with Excel and do whatever you like. So the bottom, and this is where things really get interesting, contain the conditions, or you can think of them as filters, and as well as obviously a refresh, auto refresh button. By the way, you can just click auto refresh, and in real time, you'll see that graph just moved. This will refresh. So if you want, if you really care about seeing this, you can just leave this on auto refresh in your window all the day, and this bar will grow as more traffic goes on your network, and then new bars will come in as time passes and so on. Um, along here, you can choose your date. So by default, it says one day ago, but I can change that saying, well, I want a whole weeks of data, then hit refresh, and it's basically going to generate that graph, which is just web usage. Now it's grouped by day, because that would be too many bars otherwise, but again, I can change the view to whatever I like. So all sorts of different options there. I like the bar 3D in this case, because it shows that flag is within scanned within blocked. Um, so you can pick whatever date you want. Again, all this is generated dynamically. So when I do this, it's actually running a query against the database. Now the, the great thing about that means is basically your, your options are limitless. You can view whatever data you want because you can basically craft the query right there and say this is exactly what I want to see. The downside is you're actually running a query against the database. Now if you have a decent server, that's probably no big deal. Um, if you have a site with 3,000 kids pounding away at the internet and it's pretty busy and you run a huge, I want a monthly view of what my web usage is, it has to run that query. So just be aware that that can cause extra load on your server. Um, so if you you know have a huge network and in the middle of the day you run a big report, um, just keep in mind that that can increase it because it has to run a database query. Now most of these you'll notice are fairly instantaneous. Um, it doesn't take a lot of processing power even to view the monthly, which I changed it, or, sorry, weekly. I'm looking at a weeks of data right now. All right, let me, I'm just looking at the questions real quick. Let me, uh, before I dig too much into the advanced functionality, let me just show you some basic reports. So obviously I clicked around here, which is web usage. This is web usage. Um, I can click on, well, you know, top sites by request. These are basically the top sites visited. That's a pie chart instead of a bar chart, which the last one was. Over on the right, you can see gstatic.com is the most visited site. I have no idea why. A bunch of other sites. These are probably things that different, applications used in the background and access a lot. That is a security thing. Um, Google's accessed a lot. Um, and here you can 
mouse over and get more information on any slice. And by the way, let's say I don't care about GStack. You can click on that and hide that slice if you really care and give you a slightly different view. This is all dynamic. So you can you know, click around and do whatever you like. Or you can go over here and just say, well, I want more detailed data. You can get the everything down to, hey, look, whatever this is was visited one time in the last week. I want to go to domains is actually a new concept. So in the 11.1, we had the concept of site. Site meant basically if I go to um, whatever, you know, google.com is the site in this case, but www.google.com is the site if I use the full name. Um, however, if I just want to know the domain name, google.com, Domain is now a new concept. Let me open up another server. Top domains by request. Basically, it chops off all the first part of the site name. So, and this works for if you've got co.uk and things like that for other countries. So it won't say co.uk is the domain. It'll say bbc.co.uk or whatever. Um, so that's just a new nice feature. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I hit refresh. Oops. Lost my place. Sorry. Um, so we're back on the dailies here. Um, but if I click on top domains, you'll see basically this is the same data. Top flagged host names. These are people who have done a lot of violations on the network. Um, I actually wanted to look at a different server. There we go. Top flagged host names. Let me look, switch over to say bandwidth control is another interesting report to look at. So bandwidth usage, people care a lot about this graph usually. So here you can see, well, there's basically, you know, there's not a lot going on in this network. Like I said, this is my home network. But there's two spikes yesterday, um, probably where something was downloaded. And I can restrict that time to say, well, I want to look more closely at that time frame. So that would be yesterday at... Let's start at 5 p.m. and then let's go to yesterday at 10 p.m. So here you can see, okay, well those those two spikes. We've now zoomed in a little bit. Well, let's see who those clients were. Um, most of it came from one single machine, which was three gigabytes from that one single machine. There's a whole bunch of other machines on here. A lot of external IPs, that's probably because they have port forward set up and that's inbound traffic, so those are still counted as clients. Um, let's say I wanted to see what applications those were. Well, like, what's what are those two big spikes from? Well, if I go here between 5 and 10 again, I'm looking at everything between 5 and 10 p.m. HTTP and SSL and BitTorrent are the biggest three. So, you know, if I wanted to go see, well, what were the biggest websites, I could go back to the web filter reports and view that. Um, I could also dig into, and again, I'll get down into the conditions in just a minute. I want to go through some of the basics of the report before I get into the conditions. The conditions are what truly make what Untangled does unique. I'm just trying to give a quick overview of some of the things that you can get in the basic built-in reports. Uh, application control is another neat one. Um, you can go here and see top applications by sessions or by size or and here you can kind of see what's going on in this network. It's not a ton, like I said, because it's a home network, but there's a little bit torrent and Google and Amazon and Imager and Google Play and Facebook and all sorts of stuff, Pandora. Um, let me actually show an interesting email report with an email server behind it. So this is my personal, this is an Untangled sits in front of my personal email server. So it doesn't get a ton of email, but it'll show a good example. Uh, let's go to spam blocker. So this is the spam report. And you can see I, you know, on an hourly basis, I usually get around four emails. So it's not a ton. Um, you can see almost all of them are spam. Um, here I got a real email here. I got a clean email here. I got two. Um, let's change it to look at an entire month of reports. Actually, we'll start back in 
the beginning of August. So again, that's a much bigger query. So just be aware that if you're running a huge report on a live server, that you know it could take a few seconds to draw this. Um, so now you can see a whole bunch of bars. That's a lot of days in there. Um, let me switch to area because that's probably more interesting. And you can see, wow, you know this server gets almost entirely all spam. Um, this little bit is the clean amount, which is not a lot. You know anywhere between 5 and 15 messages a day. And when you show the spam, you clearly get way more spam. In fact, that's the ratio between spam and clean email. You can see top recipients. You can kind of see whatever you want. You can go down to the individual um, events if you want to see those as well. If I want to go to virus blocker, um, again, this is just in front of an email server, so web usage is none because there's pretty much no web traffic going through this. But if I go to email usage all on the, this is again, I switched to the virus blocker report. You can see how many emails are getting scanned a day. Oh, it scans all emails with attachments. So I get less emails with attachments than total emails, but there's a lot of viruses coming in. You can see here, you know, one a day, five a day. Top viruses blocked. You can see which viruses are coming in. This one's a really popular one these days, but you know, a little bit of everything coming in. Um, so I won't go on to each application. There's all sorts of reports on each application, as well as the system itself. That'll show you all sorts of information about what's going on. I want to take some time to dig in some of the more advanced functionality. Um, give me one second to look through the questions. Shannon, do we have any good questions that I need to cover? Um, just some very specific ones. Uh, some some uh, questions about uh, transparent mode and bridge mode and stuff like that, which um, I'll mention later. We are having a tech talks on configuring on Tangle in October. We'll we'll send information about that. Um, just questions and the on are identical and so bridge mode, whether it's installed as a bridge or as a gateway, it doesn't really matter as long as the traffic's going through it. The reporting is more or less going to be the same. Uh, some are asking how far back the history depth of the reporting can go. So now in 11.2, you're now allowed to set it much higher. So you can now go up to a year. Um, I think previously it was like 50 days. The big, the big change here is now the performance of the database doesn't depend on how much data is already in the database. Uh, because of the way we partition the tables, the scheme has changed. So now you can actually store a lot of data. Just be aware, if you do like this server and you store a year's worth of data, this server is a pretty small server, so it doesn't really matter. Even after a year, it's probably going to be only two gigs of data. But if you're on a huge network, you know that could literally be hundreds of gigs of data. So you have to make sure your drive's big enough and your performance, your disk I.O. is good enough. Um, so just be aware. But you can go up to a year now, and you can run reports on the whole year. And also, if you just want to go back in time, you can look at you know a specific hour three months ago if you want. Um, so this is a nice feature that you can now turn this up uh, much, much higher than you could in previous versions. Um, just some questions about kind of uh, generalized reports for, you know, like business owners or supervisors, if there's some sort of way to send or, or provide just a, a simple view to those higher ups. Sure. So there's a couple things you can do. You can send them the report summary. Um, which is over here in email. You can add reporting users. This one doesn't have any, but like, let's say I wanted to send um, an email to this. It's a summary. It's not the full report. It's just the summary. Um, but I can also give them access to just the report, so they wouldn't be an administrator. Let's say I do this. Um, that way, they're going to get a daily email that says, "Hey, here's the summary of kind of what's going on, the high-level stuff." Um, and now if I enable online access and give them a password, they can click and actually just view the reports. And that will provide just a link to the reports so they can go here and dig in and do as much as they'd like um, directly into the UI, just like you. But they won't have access to the administration UI. Um, so that's another feature if you just want to provide kind of a peek of, to say, executives or a high-level summary of what's going on, that's a useful tool. Um, and again, you can also craft custom reports and so on. I'll go into that in a few minutes. Um, if you have specific reports that you want them to be able to see, 
um, and you can name them whatever reports for Bob. Um, I'll go into those use cases here in a few minutes. All right, so let me go back and now cover the conditions. Uh, let me switch to a different machine. Sorry, I'm getting confused between all the windows I have open. This one's a good one. Um, so let me switch back to the web filter or something. And okay, web usage all one day ago. This is my home site again. So you can see I was gone to work, came home, browsed the web, went to sleep, woke up. You can kind of see general behavior. Um, here you can see, well, there was there was some flag traffic. Um, so let me go down to here and say uh, top flagged host names, which is the, the top violators on my network, so to speak. Well, this Android character was clearly had some violations. Um, let's say I wanted to drill into that specifically. Well, now I have a way to basically add conditions on what I'm seeing. Um, so if I wanted to say, well, I only want to see reports for the host name equals that Android thing, I can do that. Or I can say any of these other ones. Let's say I wanted to pick that one. Oops. Um, and an easy way to add this is to actually click on this, which will add the condition for me. Host name equals this. Um, there's also ways to do quick add. Of, I can easily add some policies. Let's say I only wanted to see the default rack. I could add that condition saying, well, now I'm only looking at stuff on the default rack. Um, so quick add is another nice way to just select, oh, I'll, I want to drill down on this data specifically. Let me get rid of that. So you notice when I added this hosting condition, well, now all I see is this. You know, this is the only violator this, of the top flag host names. Well, that's because I'm only looking at data where the host name equals this. Um, and if I use this drop down, you can actually create conditions based on any column in this table. So you can look at specific domains or only URIs or specific users or only, you know, literally whatever you want to look at. Um, so now let me switch back to web usage all. You'll notice this is significantly different than when I last looked at it. That's because this filter is still down here. So I'm just looking at web usage all for this one device, uh, this Android phone. If I go to top domains by request, I'm again looking at the top domains used by only this phone. So the nice thing is I can add a condition down here and now look at my reports with that condition globally. Um, so let's say I wanted to investigate what the flagged violations were. You can say, okay, well that phone went to Amazon and Sonos. Um, this website or this site has shopping done as a uh, marked as a violation, which is why these are showing as a violation. And let's say I want to just view those individual reports. I can click on view reports and now look, I can see the actual visits from that Android phone to those domains, to those hosts and what URIs they were. I can see all the information that comprise of those specific things. Um, so let me switch to this report view, which had all the categories on the left. Somebody asked a question, can I view by a specific rack? Um, the easy way to do that now is to say, well, let's say I only want to look at, well, this only has one rack, default rack, but um, now I'm looking at reports for all these things only by the default rack. Um, so if you had a teacher rack and a student rack, you can now look at reports by student. Um, so the conditions are what it really gets interesting. So earlier I was talking about, oh, let me go into top applications by total bytes, and hey, there was a whole bunch of stuff. Well, there's BitTorrent here. Let's say I don't want BitTorrent in my network. I want to drill in what BitTorrent is. I can add a condition for saying, well, I only, look at, only want to look at those sessions which are BitTorrent. So let me switch back to bandwidth usage, and now you can say, okay, clearly at this time, around 9.30 p.m., somebody downloaded something with BitTorrent. So again, I'm looking at reports for just BitTorrent. Let me go to top clients or top host names even, and you can clearly see which computer downloaded something. All these are external uh, because it's BitTorrent. It has an inbound traffic, so that's why it's showing up. These did technically create BitTorrent traffic. They just came from outside. Um, but this guy is, is internal, so clearly you can see that was the person that started the BitTorrent download. So, and there's a whole bunch of conditions here. Um, these basically are used to create SQL queries. So, 
um, I can do things like I can do all sorts of interesting things. Like let's say um, e equals is the most common one, but let's say I wanted to look at um, only domains or only let me say host, which had involved Google in some way. I can do star percent Google, and this is all my web traffic that the host name had Google in it somewhere. If I click on view events, you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, it did a search and said, well, I'm only looking at you know, stuff that has Google in it somewhere, play.google and mail.google and safe browsing.google and things like that. Um, so you can do all sorts of things. You know, If I only wanted to look at large web visits, I would do content length. Oops. Oh, I should show this actually. So, content length is an integer, and I did something where content length is like Google, and I got, let's say I changed it to equal. I got an exception saying that's not valid. So if you see this, that's because that's not a valid SQL query in the database. It's trying to, to query that, and it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so if you see that, it's probably because something doesn't make sense down here. Um, let's say if I wanted to only look at things above, well, that's going to show nothing because no web content was exactly 1 million bytes. But let's say I wanted to view things that were only above 1 megabyte. Well, now you can see all those above 1 megabyte. I'm looking at all web events here. If I went to web usage, that would show the web usage of all requests of over 1 megabyte. So that's why the event logs are here now, because the, the conditions here also apply to the events that you're viewing. Um, so that's why they're both in the same view. We've kind of merged what used to be the event logs and the reports entries into one single panel, because they both are applied conditions. Give me a few minutes to read through the questions and make sure I'm doing a good job of covering any confusing points. And again, if you have questions, feel free to type them into the questions and answers. All right, I'll just keep uh, keep moving because there's a couple things I want to show. Um, one of the really cool things now, let me switch to a larger network, is the host viewer. Um, this is a really cool host. Let me show you the main UI real quick. So many of you are familiar with, up here at the top, you can do sessions or hosts, and if you click on those, you can open the session view or the host viewer. You can also click here and say show host. And now in 11.2, this shows you everything on this network. Okay, it's not a huge network. It's only 20 devices or something, but you can see generally, you know, the host name of the devices, everything that's known about every single host on this network at this point in time. Who the Mac, what the MAC address is, who the MAC vendor is, that kind of helps you figure out, okay, that's a Dell machine, that's an Apple machine, that's clearly an iPhone, that's clearly an iPhone. Um, the user agent, which also can help you figure out kind of what it is, the quota size, kind of all the information. And again, you can add columns here that some columns are hidden by default just because there's too much information to show. Um, so all that's available in the host viewer. Now there's actually reports based on that. So if I go to reports, I can say host viewer, host size. You can see, you know, kind of how big your network is. Obviously, when people go home overnight, it gets smaller. Um, and some general stats about updates to the host table, and also some pretty cool ways to say, hey, look, I can actually view my history and see what it learned about different hosts over time. So if you're doing forensics and you say, okay, you know, this IP did this at this time, use BitTorrent, and I want to investigate who that is or what that is, you can go back in time and look at this, and it'll tell you a lot of information about what that IP was and when it was. So here, for example, it learned that the host name of this device was this Android thing. Now, it could have learned that in multiple ways, DNS or DHCP. Um, it can learn a lot of things, but now you have a log about when it learned these different things. Uh, when it gave it a quota, when it learned the user agent. So the first time it does a web request, it's going to say, wait a minute, I now know the user agent. Um, 
this is clearly a Macintosh of some sort. Um, oh, that's a different IP than 85. Um, and again, you can add filters. Let's say I only want to investigate one single host. I typed 185, and now it's only looking at things that have 185 here. Um, so if I wanted to do that on the server side, that just does it locally inside my browser. If I wanted to do it on the server side, I'd use a condition down here. I was reading the questions. Give me just a second. A lot of the questions are kind of generic, untangled questions. I'm trying to focus mainly on reports. Those are a lot of good questions. Um, if the question is not related to reports, um, give us a call or contact us at supportedentangled.com or even jump on the forums um, and we'll try to answer your questions. Um, I'm going to try to keep it mainly reports focused, um, although I do see a lot of good questions. Um, so that was the host table reports, which are a great tool for those of you um, who are doing forensics. I'm going to go real quick into how to create custom reports because I think this is very valuable. So everything I've done so far, let me look at a different, what's a report we haven't looked at? Mm, Adblocker. That doesn't look very interesting on this network. Uh, I'll use my well, own sheets web filter. Um, so again, this is the web filter report. No conditions. One day ago. Let's say I have a specific. You know, I was looking earlier at the top flagged host name or top flagged uh, clients, and I say, well, let me specifically dig into this user. Actually, let me switch networks real quick. Get rid of this condition. Top flagged host name. So earlier we talked about this Android device. Let's say this user was a common problem. Um, so much so that I, you know, did a big investigation and I needed to frequently see reports for this specific user, but I didn't always want to add a condition. I can actually create a custom report for that one specific user. So here I showed you, you know, you can change views, you can do all sorts of things. Let's say I got tired of doing that and I just wanted to create a new report. I can go up here to customize my new report, give it a decent name for this Android device, and let's say I want this report to be basically just like web usage all, but I only want it to be for this one specific host name. I can add this condition. I give it a new report name. Obviously, I don't want to reuse the same name. It's already in the load filter category. There's a whole bunch of stuff here I can customize. You probably won't want to change all this. Um, you know, some of it's pretty self-explanatory. The style of the chart. Let's say I wanted an area chart instead of a bar chart. What the bars are, what the colors are, uh, the time interval. You know, by default it's auto, which basically means, hey, I'll figure out hourly or minutely based on, based on your time frame. But you can also hard code that. So let me click done here. And where did that go? Oh, that's what I'm already looking at. Um, the other way to add reports is if you go in here and you click manage reports, you'll see this huge list of report entries. This is what shows up under reports when you view reports. So here I can actually just view the individual report by clicking the play button, um, or I can edit it. And I can't edit the built-in ones, so I have to create a copy. This is basically the same thing I just did, my new report, and add, let's say, host name. It's not host, host name. This is just a different way to do the same thing I just did. And now click done, and you'll say, okay, there's the new report, but I have to save it. Um, so now I've added a new report to web, the web filter category. And if I go into my reports, there's my new report that I added that showed, hey, this is just for that one specific device. 
I click on customize again, it gets back to this screen where you can customize it and change it and so on. Um, and then you click save a new report if you want to actually permanently save what you're viewing. Um, you can create all sorts of custom ones. The easiest way is based on things that are already in there. Um, because as you can see, if you're creating them from scratch and the wiki describes what the different fields mean, just keep in mind that there are a lot of different fields here. So if I want to create one from scratch, you know, there's all you have to pick which table you want to query, and all this is documented, the schema and so on in the wiki now. You can see the different tables. The common ones are HTTP events and sessions because that's where most of the data is. But there's literally kind of everything here. Um, you can create all sorts of different things, different charts, different summaries based on the data you want to see. Um, the colors, whatever you want to see. So for those of you who want some really high level reports for executives, let's say you maybe care specifically about what application specific machines using, come in here, create a custom report, name it something convenient, and then it's easy to access it in the reports from going on. You can also just create that on the fly with conditions and so on, but it may be easier to just save the report going forward. Uh, Dirk, there, um, there's a question um, if you could show some reports in the Intrusion Prevention app. Sure. Let me go down to Intrusion. Actually, let me access it from up here just in case we want to add conditions. And intrusion Prevention, that's a good one to show. So let me, um, this is 24 hours. There's a lot of flag stuff in here. Um, Nothing is blocked. I don't think I block anything on this server. If I go to top source ports or not source IPs logged, I can see, wow, well, there's stuff from all over the internet. There's also some stuff of internal. Um, I should probably investigate what that is and see if that's important. Let me go to top rules. Um, this is kind of what was detected. Um, now, having looked at these reports before, I know kind of what these things are. Port sweep means this may be a port scan. doesn't mean it was a port scan. It just means, hey, it saw a lot of connections. Um, a lot of times that gets flagged because BitTorrent tries to open a lot of connections and it thinks it's a port scan. SSH event proto mismatch. Um, that is usually somebody connected to port 22 and tried something funky, um, tried to connect on SSH. Uh, bad reset is not really alarming. That just means a reset that doesn't make a lot of sense for TCP. Um, this is usually related to people trying to connect to port 22 and just guess passwords and whatnot. Um, so I don't see anything too super alarming here. If I go to all events, I can actually look at the individual events um, with the rule ID and so on. And again, some stuff is hidden by default. Actually, everything's shown by default on this. So you can see the port sweep. This is internal machines, so that's probably running BitTorrent, which is why it's saying port sweep. Um, because it's just seeing a lot of traffic and it's suspecting that somebody may be port scanning, but that's an internal host, so I don't think so because it's going to different hosts all over. Um, SSH proto mismatch. That's an external IP connecting to my external IP on port 22. A lot of times, non-standard protocol. Um, you know, in other words, I don't know, there's something fishy going on there. That guy was clearly trying to connect to port 22 and trying something. Um, not super alarming. It actually happens a lot if you have port 22 open. Um, so that's kind of an intrusion prevention report. We can see the top attacked IPs. Obviously, my public IP is number one. Um, there's also some internal host. And again, you can filter on this. Let's. I don't know what that is. So let's say I wanted to look at those specific events. Oh, that's just another. I guess that's an internal host talking to an internal host. It thought it was port scanning for some reason. Um, just because it's probably doing a lot of different sessions. So I probably need to go into this and turn this one off just because it's clearly flagging a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't be. So that's an intrusion prevention report. Uh, obviously, yours will vary a lot depending on what rules you have enabled and so on. Uh, but it will help you go in and say, well, maybe I do want to actually block some of these or which ones do I want to block and so on. Uh, one of the things I didn't go into was AD usernames. Um, so 
That's a good question. Thank you for asking. This machine or this server does not have directory connector configured because there's no um, usernames really configured. But let me switch to a network which possibly does because this one I think has Active Directory or something that it integrates with. So if I go to Web Filter um, and I view the same kind of information but by username, top username by request. Oh no, there's no usernames on this site either. Well, sorry. Um, so it'll say none because nobody has usernames. So we're not running Capture Portal and we don't have any directory connector on this site. Um, but it would basically be the same thing as um, top host names by request. You know, it would be similar to this except instead of the host names it would be the actual usernames. Um, and you can add filters based on that just like anything I showed which is say, well I only want to look at traffic related to username equals dmorris. The nice thing about that is even if I use 10 different machines during the day, the reports would just show this username. Um, so even if I use 10 different machines throughout the day, it's just going to show the DMORIS reports regardless of what machine I was living on. Um, there was a question about the host table. Um, in here, this is new. MAC address and MAC vendor are new in 11.2. Mac vendor is just comes from the public database of who owns that Mac address. So not all Macs are known. Uh, they're not all registered. This is basically a public database that people say, hey, Apple, I register this range of Mac addresses. Uh, but just because you have a Mac address doesn't mean that it's registered necessarily. And by the way, you know, machines can change their Mac addresses to pretty much arbitrary numbers. So um, this is just kind of for convenience, although you can create rules based on the Mac vendor saying, hey, I want all Dell machines to you know, go to this rack or whatever. Um, so it is kind of convenient to uh, manage and set up policy manager rules, firewall rules, and so on if you do things like that. Um, are there any other good questions that I should cover? I think we've covered most of them. Um, I know a lot of people are asking generic untangle setup questions, so please um, post on the forums or contact support. Um, just because this is we're, we're trying to focus on the new reports. Yeah, I see a lot of generic <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um, please give us a call or, or jump on the forums or whatever. We'd be glad to help you. Um, trying to keep this mainly reports focused. Um, so I'll just recap real quick the basics of what you need to know when you get 11.2. Um, let me switch over this machine again. Actually, so again, you know, navigation over here, selecting your what you're looking at is in this panel. The data is on the right, and again, you can hide these. Let's say your screen's really small and you want to get a better view. You can hide this kind of stuff. Along the top is the way you're viewing the data as well as customizing it, creating new reports, viewing the data you're looking at, downloading and saving it. And then again, the, the thing that really makes Untangle reports unique is these conditions. Everybody has a graph that, you know, in bandwidth control says, hey, here's what your bandwidth usage was like yesterday. Um, What's you, interesting about these reports is that you can now drill down on any aspect. So earlier I showed how you could look at just BitTorrent traffic or just a specific user, but you can also do the same for a specific policy. Um, and by the way, we now actually log bypass traffic. So you can look at bypass traffic only or only scan traffic or the ratio between the two. Um, so the conditions are what really make Untangle shine. The report's completely different than all the other ones out there. Um, so if you learn to use these conditions, you can pretty much do limitless things with your reports and really drill down on any aspect and look at the individual events if you want over here based on the conditions for any time frame within the last year or however much data you save. So we think this is a huge step forward. We really hope you guys will give them a try, give us your feedback, let us know what you'd like to see. Obviously it's very easy to add custom reports, um, but if it's a really useful report, we can just add a new report. Um, the next version. Um, we kind of went through these and just said, hey, here's the stuff. 
that we think people want to see um, and that we certainly want to see on our networks. Um, but if there's other things that people want to see, it's pretty easy to add these now. Um, and you can craft them on your own. Just let us know what you'd like to see based on the tables and data that we already have, and we can easily add new report entries. Uh, and you can craft them yourself and give them a try as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Hopefully you've learned a little bit. Feel free to reach out to us. Give us your feedback. Hey, Dirk. Ask us any questions we weren't able to cover. Hey, Dirk, let's uh, hop back over to the PowerPoint slide just really quick. Um, has some useful, if you go to the last slide, has some useful um, uh, uh, links, um, obviously, to contact us, sales at untangle.com, support at untangle.com, the Untangle wiki, um, the forums. Uh, we also have uh, the change log for 11.2 and the new reports, um, so you can take a look at those. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we have a Tech Talks October 8th um, about um, con configuring Untangle. Um, John Coffin, our director of QA, will be running that um, and, and helping uh, with the setup process. Um, so we'll, with the follow-up emails that we send out uh, after this uh, with, with the recorded uh, link for this webinar uh, will also be a registration link for that if you're interested or have questions about that. So thank you, Dirk, very much. Um, again, if we didn't get to your questions, please just contact us and we'll be happy to answer them. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.